Good afternoon and thanks for coming. I'm the ammonia guy and uh, I, I'm not going to bore you with uh, too much theory. What you'll be seeing here will be uh, actual examples of low charge ammonia systems that have been installed in, in new installations and there'll also be examples of, of retrofits. This is what Mr Hunt said in October and uh, last year and, and I dare say there's no escape. Uh, HFCs will go and we all have to get used to it. A lot of you out there are end users and you'll be saying to yourselves, well here's another case of, of costs uh, that, that's going to hit us for no benefit and for no need. Well we can argue about the, uh, the need and we can argue about the benefits. My message to you is that you can control how big the benefits uh, of this investment, this necessary investment will be simply by dictating to your consultants come suppliers what it is that you want. You can just change the gas with some of the new uh, synthetic refrigerants and you will have no benefits, you will just have increased costs over the lifetime of the plant or you can make the right decision and you will have huge benefits associated with this investment that you must that you must have uh, and those benefits I'll talk to you about. They'll be in the form of, of energy savings, enormous energy savings, uh, in the same category, size category as, as the ones um, that George was, was telling you about. We must go to uh, low GWP refrigerants. There are two kinds. There are synthetic ones and there are natural ones. The synthetic ones that are coming on the market are very expensive. The natural refrigerants are very cheap. Uh, I won't go into what natural refrigerants are because they, it's all been explained before. There are five and you can see them up there. The three that are of interest uh, in this forum are, are probably ammonia, carbon dioxide and hydrocarbons. Air and water, air, very low temperature systems and water will be coming for large scale air conditioning in probably a decade or so it's already starting to happen. There are a few people who have compressors. So can we distinguish between the two refrigerant categories by means of flammability? Well, not really, because all low GWP refrigerants, whether they're natural or synthetic, doesn't matter. They're all flammable. It's just a, a function of, of degree. What about toxicity? Can we say that, that uh, we can distinguish between synthetic and natural refrigerants by means of toxicity? We cannot really. Uh, there are natural refrigerants that are toxic. The new low GWP refrigerants that are coming out, if they're not toxic in their own right, they will have toxic combustion products. I'm talking about HFOs, 1234 YF, which has already finished up in some cars, will, will have uh, very nasty combustion products, hydrogen fluoride and carbonyl fluoride. Uh, carbonyl fluoride uh, the maximum limit in the air you breathe is 0.35 parts per million. It's about a hundred times more dangerous than hydrogen fluoride. This is, this is what is being proposed for motor vehicles globally. Now we get to the interesting part. Uh, this is the business case I was talking to you about before and this is not theory, it's not simulation. These are actual kilowatt hour metre readings that uh, have been experienced in practice over a period of 12 months. If you have a, a, a HFC based, industry standard HFC based uh, system like the one on the picture, uh, if you can afford to keep on paying the exorbitant electricity bills associated with a system like that for five years, you can have a new one for the money you have saved. You can have one of these low charge ammonia systems uh, which will reduce the bill from the $46,000 you saw before per month to uh, about a third of that. Uh, this is uh, real. This is another case that hasn't happened yet but it will happen. This is a, a, a typical installation with a large number of uh, air cooled uh, hydrofluorocarbon based condensing units. Um, each one servicing one cold room or one freezer. To convert that to a low charge ammonia system will cost 1.9 million dollars 
this will reduce the specific energy consumption. So this is kilowatt hours divided by cubic meters refrigerated volume divided by years. From 143 kilowatt hours per cubic meter per annum to 38 kilowatt hours per cubic meter per annum. So uh, combined energy saving and maintenance cost saving is $400,000 a year. So the payback is uh, five years. Uh, this may not be acceptable for some people, some financial controllers, some of them require two years, but there is help from uh, the New South Wales government, there's also help from the Clean Energy Finance uh, Corporation and there's help from people like John Fick. Here's another example uh, from Perth. Uh, this is actually not a conversion. Uh, the, bad, the red one is a Freon system in the same suburb as the green one. So the two plants are roughly the same size in terms of refrigeration capacity. But the Freon system, or HFC system, which is the red one, consumes uh, electricity worth $42,000 a month, and the uh, low-charge ammonia system is $30,000 $13, a month, uh, in that order. So again, this is a factor three. So if you look at the return on investment, it costs $2 million to convert from the red one to the green one, and you get a return on investment of 17%. Again, some people require a two-year pay payback, but but where do you get where do you get 17% return on your money? These days, you don't get it in the bank. So where do we sit in terms of energy efficiency when we compare with the rest of the industry, cold storage industry? Now this graph here is from California, where uh, around 167 refrigerated warehouses, a mixture of public and private ones, were investigated. So here we can see the specific energy consumption in kilowatt hours per cubic meter per annum and here we can see the warehouse size in cubic meters. So the two examples I just gave you, they sit there at about 50% of what one would normally expect in specific energy consumption. Now these are just some pictures of the actual installations. This one is from Tamworth. This is the freezer. This is a plan layout of the facility. It's about 10,000 cubic meters, so it's a very small facility. It's what you would, five years ago, you would have done this in R404A. <laughs> so here comes a very important message. Are natural refrigerants uh, a guarantee that you will save energy? And it is not. Here we see two ammonia plants. One is a, a low charge, state of the art ammonia system. This is a conventional uh, ammonia system with gravity flooded evaporators and two single stage screw compressors in parallel. And this is the difference. We have uh, 106 kilowatt hours per cubic meter per annum in energy consumption for the bad one and, and 43 for the low, the low stage or the low charge system. So what is wrong with that system, the one in the red circle? Lots of things are wrong. So, so, so the message is that just because you buy an ammonia system, there's no guarantee that it's going to put uh, a lot of money, extra money on the bottom line. You need to look at the detail, and this is important. There's a, there's a lot of uh, confusion out there about screw compressors versus reciprocating compressors. Are VFDs feasible, are they not, and so on. If you add up all these things, uh, they all add up to uh, incremental improvements in energy efficiency. So this particular client uh, who had this bad red plant that, that consumed uh, 106 kilowatt hours per cubic meter per annum, all he did to make it better was, was reduce the condensing pressure. So from a fixed condensing pressure, it became a floating condensing pressure and he saved a third. This is what the difference is between the two plants in real dollars. $8,000 per month for the good one and $22,000 per month for the bad one. It is the same jurisdiction, so there's no real difference in, in electricity uh, costs per unit. This is what it is. So $8,000, $100,000 a year, this is a quarter of a million, uh, maybe a little more. The, the peculiar thing is that the capital cost is much the same. Both of these systems cost about $850,000 each. 
Now this is uh, the green one, as I said before, the, the low charge ammonia system and the red one is uh, a conventional ammonia system with gravity flooded evaporators. There are lots of the red ones in service in the marketplace today. So what can we learn out of this? There's no guarantee that ammonia will give you superior energy performance. So what is it that will guarantee superior energy performance? And what it is, it's, it's designed for energy efficiency. There's a whole lot of things that one can look at uh, while doing the design. And we all sort of have a tendency to participate in the race down to the bottom and provide the cheapest solution. Well, the difference between a good system and a bad system in real life in capital costs is probably only 10 to 15 percent when we talk ammonia systems. So all these factors, all these factors that one can take into account during the design, here they all are, they're listed here, you can look at them later, <laughs> they're not to be viewed in, in, in isolation, they're, they're, they're to be considered in such a way that if you take out screw compressors and put in reciprocators with VFDs, well you might save in the order of 15 to 25 percent and then you move on to the next step. So it's an incremental uh, process. The fact that uh, one that we use uh, in some systems, uh, 304 stainless steel interconnecting refrigerant pipelines that have a low friction factor and all that, it's just a small contribution but it all adds up in the end and the result is significant, significant energy savings. So what's really new here, I mean, uh, there, there's a lot of people dabbling in low charge ammonia system, most of it emanates from the US. What the Americans are doing is driven by regulation. If you have an ammonia plant in the US where the charge is under 100 pounds, uh, the authorities leave you alone. So the target is to get under 100 pounds. So what the Americans do, they sacrifice energy efficiency in return for charge reduction and it saves them a lot of money in regulations. We don't do that here because you cannot sell that. What you can sell here is low charge as well as energy efficiency. So that's kind of what we're doing. A low charge ammonia system is no different to a Freon DX system. We just replace the gas. That's as simple as that. You can read all this yourself. There's, a, there's one, one important thing to note in all this, and this is, um, this is the way the injection is controlled into the evaporators. Traditionally, with dry expansion evaporators, we use superheat to control the injection. We don't do that anymore. Uh, in these plants, we use what is called quality uh, measurement at the evaporator exit to control the injection. Now, this is where things get a little comp complicated, and just after lunch, I understand this sends some of you asleep. But, but this, this is really, uh, this is really the, the major new part in all this. All the other stuff is conventional. Now this is a simple explanation of what uh, quality control is. The sensor, that blue one over there where the arrow is, that is the quality sensor that sits in the evaporator gas outlet in the plant. It is able to see the mix between liquid and gas coming out of the evaporator. In the, this means we really control in the wet area here of the lock pH, we 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 to the to the left of of the of the line. This this line here is the difference between uh, liquid and gas. So we're controlling in the wet area. So in practice, we can control with one to five percent liquid coming out of the evaporator. This makes the evaporator utilisation better. We we can control at temperature differences between air and ammonia of in the order of two to three degrees without instability. The liquid disappears from the suction line. Any liquid in a suction line in a system will increase the pressure drop in the suction line by a factor of seven to 10. Once you get rid of the liquid in the suction line, the pressure drop reduces, energy performance improves. Now this is just a picture showing the stainless steel pipelines. This is the, uh, the, the reduction in charge from about three to four kilograms per kilowatt down to one to 1.2 uh, kilograms per kilowatt. So the message here is that if you invest in a, in a, in a retrofit, so you have an existing Freon plant, you get rid of that, you put in a new ammonia plant, 
you'll get a return on investment of around 20% or pay back five years. If you have a greenfield situation where you're tossing up, should I buy a Freon plant or should I buy an ammonia plant, the return is more like in the order of 35 to 50%, so two to three years payback. Typically, uh, a low charge ammonia plant might cost you 1.2 million for an average uh, warehouse. Freon plant might be 800,000. That difference of 400,000 can be returned in two to three years in energy savings alone. And this is not theory, this is practical examples. Uh, gradually we're getting rid of all this stuff with uh, constant supervision of the ammonia plant, constant oil drainage and all that. So for all intents and purposes, the, the low, the low ch charge ammonia plant becomes like a, like a Freon plant where you don't do anything. You know, you don't drain oil, you don't do any of that stuff. The oil goes back to the compressors automatically. The price of a low charge ammonia plant is about the same as a liquid overfeed system but one and a half to two times the price of an industry standard HFC based system that uses three times more energy. When we first started this, the first plant went in in 2012 roughly and it, it had conventional superheat control. It was very, very difficult to get the client to accept that this was going to be the future. And he was pleasantly surprised that the energy performance was much better than predicted. So these numbers of uh, 60 to 70 percent reduction in any performance was a surprise to us and it was a, a real surprise to the client. So by this time next year there will be about 10 of these systems operating in well, nine in Australia and one in China. Uh, it, it, it sells itself on energy performance, that's all I can say. So that little guy up there, the smiley face, now you know how he smiles and now you know why he wears that t-shirt. Once you go ammonia, you never go back.